Howdy, boss. Howdy, Jim. <sighs> Maybe cool in here, but it sure is hot digging. Howdy. Oh. Well, welcome, pilgrims. Sit down for a while. This is the Great Saltpeter Cave. Would you like to know a little about it? The Great Saltpeter Cave was discovered by Robert Baker in 1798. He's the first man recorded to discover the cave, but no doubt Indians knew about it and probably used the cave long before that. It was discovered the cave was rich in saltpeter dirt. The dirt was used in the making of gunpowder. It was essential in the making of gunpowder, so mining operations began in the cave. During the peak operation of the mine, there was as many as 70 or 80 men working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to extract the dirt. The saltpeter crystals were then sent by a pack horse, mule, or a canoe to Pittsburgh powder mills. Later, a mill was set up in Lexington and then nearby Powder Mill Holler to process it into the valuable saltpeter. The saltpeter was blended with sulfur and charcoal to produce gunpowder. The height of the profit to be made occurred during the War of 1812. The British had a blockade in effect. Saltpeter was vital hard to get from sources outside of the U.S. When the war ended, the blockade on shipping was lifted. Cheap saltpeter from India could now be imported. By 1815, Eastern Powder Mills had put a cap on prices. This pretty much made American saltpeter not nearly as profitable to mine. Soon, mine owners began to cut pay and then began to miss payrolls. Miners laid down their picks and shovels and returned home. But the mines were reopened over the years, mostly for saltpeter during other wars, including the Mexican War, and then finally during the Civil War. The area around the cave had been devastated by the mining operations. Trees had been clear-cut for miles around for fuel and lumber. After the Civil War, mining was finally halted. Slowly, the forest reclaimed the mountains and the cave was forgotten. However, the cave has been rediscovered many times over the years. Well, John Lair 
the man who built the world-famous Renfro Valley Music Center, and Dr. Walker Owens bought the cave. They began allowing tourists into the cave in the 1940s. Lights and paths were put in. The cave operated for many years as a wonderful adventure vacation spot. The cave eventually closed again. It was then donated the state of Kentucky to be used and preserved for its historical aspects. The cave has become a popular site to learn and explore in. The Great Salt Peter Cave has hosted many folks and lots of scout troops over the years. A Hollywood movie titled Fire Down Below was even filmed inside the caves. The cave is only open to the general public one weekend a year. That weekend is the weekend after Mother's Day, so come see it. This is just a small part of the history of this amazing cave. Be sure to go online and read the many stories and exciting tales about the history of the Great Salt Peter Cave. Well, boss, I think it's about time to get back to digging. So you and these folks are going to watch the show. Where do you want to go next? About right here. Oh, the eastern part of the cave. All right, that's a little wider. It won't be so hard on the back. Folks, enjoy the show. We hope to see you again soon sometime. after Mother's Day. And it's not open to the general public during the, during the year, so it's a great thing to go see. We have free tours the weekend after Mother's Day. But as you can see, we're driving down Interstate 75. Shut up, flying up. And we're down about 20 miles below Richmond, Kentucky. Well, maybe not quite 20, but on it's the second Mount Vernon exit going south. Everybody sh say, shut up, clock. Shut up, clock. Shut up, clock. It worked. Now, you can see there's construction on right now when you come down. Look at that pretty water. When they get ready to um, come down, it probably won't be construction. Sure. I'm sure this will be open right next year, would you, Georgie? Yeah, there, there's a boat getting swallowed by a big giant shark. But coming south, it'll be the second Renfro Valley exit. <laughs> There's so many the hedgehog over there, Dad. Really? There, there's um pillars in the woods. Yeah, let's look ahead of us right here. Here comes our exit up right here. There's Sonic the Hedgehog! Guys, like that's where Sonic lives, the little path. See? Sonic. Here's our here's our exit.
looks like it's an old graveyard at some point. Or I found this mm -hmm. funny video. Totally forgot this. The cow, cow mud basket.
are we doing today? We are going to the Salt Peter Cave. And we got a special guest with us. Brianna. Brianna from Brianna Toddler Time TV. And she's got her own show too. And we're gonna all go into the Great Salt Peter Cave, right? What do you think about it? Well, it's pretty cool, but last year I really didn't like it. I think you'll like it better this year. George, you the first year he was here. He didn't like it either, did you? Let's George? do math. Now, it's only open two days a year, so not a whole lot of people get to see this cave, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take the audience along with us and show them what it looks like. And let's do math. And we'll do math on five the way. Minus five equals ten. I can do two. No, five minus five equals zero. Um, five plus five uh, equals ten. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. Let's go to the cave. Run! Onward, everybody. It's up there. You can see him going up the path. We're all gonna go up and we're gonna tour this cave, right? There's Pikachu on the top I think we need to get you a different thing. There's Pikachu, What do you think of this? Oh. I heard there's a giant infestation of bats this year. Seven. Nope. Do you guys bring your bat bat suits? I think there is gonna be bats, but don't be on that. Last year there really wasn't any bats. No, I think there was one little one on the table. There was there was one. Okay, okay. There's the entrance to the cave right up there. So we'll be going in soon, right? Yep. Right. Okay. Stay tight in a group. Remember last year they almost locked us in because they almost forgot that we were in there. Oh, yeah. They really did. Remember, Brianna? Okay, I watch for bats, okay? Let's go, let's go. Head them out, move them up. Why there a movie poster right in the middle? Look, guys. That's because that's where they shot it. The movie Fire Down Below was shot in this very cave. So let's go behind the See, look, this is, this is a prop beam. Look, that's an actual fake beam in the movie. Really? Yes, it sure is.
YouTube channel. More than what? Including my new YouTube channel. We gotta come over. Look at this. Listen, that's what it is. It's on my TV. Yes, they set up a huge, they had set up huge scaffolds and there was an intensely bright light up there to mimic the daylight coming in. It's all pretend. But uh, there was every bit of this room was occupied with this uh, stuff. And Seagal and all of that, they jumped around and did their stunt double stuff. It was quite a thing. <laughs> That's what it looked like I was doing. Ooh la la. I've never <laughs> seen this before. <laughs>
this is here so you can see how it's constructed. That's the only reason it's sitting here. You can see the planks and the blocks interconnected. There's these half round blocks underneath to act like filters, and then a trough to collect the niter, which is like you know the coffee that I'm talking about. And that this trough is in this pipe and the pipe is conveying the stuff outside, and the other pipe conveying the water to pour in here. But they're not up here.
did a great tour. You really did. It was a lot of fun. <laughs>